Radio.tv, bringing you the news before it happens. Stream live into your home via the worldwide internet. Welcome to Profit.tv, bringing you the latest news from the spiritual front. The following program is being streamed live from Profit.tv. Join us now for Profit.tv. Join us now for Profit.tv. Program already in progress. Sometimes after our meetings here, when I pray for people, um, and I've been going out with people, but sometimes I, I shouldn't go out with people because I have to focus on what I've dealt with in the spirit and I'll go sit down and do that. And a couple times it happened and this thing's just all over my head. I can't do that. I learned that if I don't pay attention until the retaliation mode is over and that stuff lodges, it's a lot harder to deal with. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it, God doesn't tell me every meeting. It's like I trained you. You're being stubborn. About what? You're being, being you, you, what? You're foolish? What's the problem? You, I mean, one time he told me, I said, God, what's going on? He said, you know the rope. <laughs> I said, okay, okay, sorry. So I had to learn this. All right, now, you could go to a lot of religious people, and they'll probably say, oh, that Don Paul is teaching this funny stuff out of the Bible, because they don't know that. No, Jesus bore their sins on the cross, right? All right. So I went to God and said, because God always taught me first, then gave me the scriptures. Why? My children taught me my spirit. Then he gave me the scriptures. Because I'd always seek him. I'd go, okay, God, I got the phenomena. I pray it, the thing's off. Now I'm dealing with the thing. Oh, that's just psychosis. I mean, forget it. You're running all kinds of stuff in this psychology church thing. Um, I said, God, all right, I know this is the phenomena you're teaching me. And I would do this every time he would teach me a new lesson. Okay, this is the phenomena. Now give me the scriptures so that I know I'm not on Fantasy Island. And I kept asking him. And he didn't give me this for a while. And it would, I'd, and more of the same. And I pray and what would pray off. And I got the phenomena. It was really happening. I would try and psych myself and this won't happen. And it happened. And I would, okay, it's really happening. Um, he finally gives me the scripture. They brought to Jesus all that were sick and oppressed of the devil. And he healed them all that the scripture in Isaiah might be fulfilled. He himself bore their sickness and infirmity. Then the Holy Spirit said, had Jesus died on the cross when that was fulfilled? No. That was during his daily ministry. And then Jesus said, everything I do and greater will you do. Isn't that interesting? And that's the way God taught me that. It is scriptural that we bear one another's burdens, that we do not lay hands on people suddenly or partake in their sin. Why did I not jump up and start trying to cast demons off of some guy? I'm not going to jump in and lay and partake in the de his sin, the demons. It's not, it's not anointed to God. He's not ready for it. He's not open for that. Does that make sense? People go, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you got the heal, if you got the gift of God, that healing, you go clean out the hospital. No, it's not the time. The anointing's not there. One man's not going to take all that retaliation. Do you realize sometimes when spirits come out of people, the reason you can't see greater people things healed is because you couldn't. The spirit would just invade you because you're not built up enough to resist at that level. Did you know that that's any of what this is all about? Anybody ever told you that? <laughs> All right. So we're really lacking in our revelation in the postmodern church or whatever you call it. The, we're really lacking because leaders that are teaching haven't walked. I, I guess they're only teaching what they know. They're teaching what they learned, which is the rules. And, and the Ten Commandments keep you from getting demonized. That's fine. But we need to be able to set captives free. All right. Um, some of you guys are walking in some of those things and being challenged at different levels in your walk. Make sure when you pray for people that you do it by the Spirit. It's always good, can, to get some tongues in there and let the Holy Spirit do more of the prayer and the warfare. It's good to pray in tongues always because it builds up your spirit man. And the more authority and the more built up your spirit man is, the less demons will think about challenging you. Will demons challenge you? Sure. Think of it like a natural fight. If they think they can win, what the heck are they going to let you come in and take what they own? You're in a fight. Death and poverty would like to take you out. Looks like it's kicking some other people's butts pretty good. Does that make sense? I mean, I have compassion, but I can't heal the world. But I can raise warriors up 
who can begin as they're led by God to reach more and more people. Does that make sense? But Jay Young was talking this morning about that he came to the realization he has a, a real anointing for healing. Uh huh. And he came to the realization that most of his prayer is in the spirit because he doesn't know where to pray for the people. And uh, and so he said that he was in Korea talking to Paul Young Yi Cho. And Young Yi Cho was saying that he prays three to four hours a day. And, and Chase, how in the world do you do that? He said, how much of that's in the spirit and how much of in your mind? And he said, 95% is in the spirit. Of course. Bob Cathers used to teach, pray eight hours a day in the spirit. And that's how he raised up Charlie. Kim Clement said, to, and back then Bob said, if you're not praying eight hours a day in the spirit, you're having coffee with the devil. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Bob was very, no, but I'm telling you, you might say it's con condemning, but if a new Christian starts his walk and that's what he hears, he thinks it's normal. A fat and sassy Christian that's been sucking up on every doctor and a big shot in his church and has no authority in the spirit. What are you talking about? I've been doing God long. Don't tell me what you're, no authority in the spirit. But boy, he'll lead meetings, he'll write books, he'll sell books, he'll run the Christian business, no authority in the spirit. So it's easier to take a beginning believer and just get them praying in the spirit right away. I couldn't believe it. I went and, and spoke at um, where they do the Hollywood transformations. All right. And I went in and spoke as a guest speaker. And I went in there and I'm not going to name his name. He's in, I mean, good men. Everybody's good men. I don't care about that because most of these good men I would never hang out with in my real life anyway. Does that make sense? I mean, it's not like people I would hang out with. Uh, I'm going there specifically to assist that territory in authority. First problem is nobody in his church is praying in tongues. He does. Some people have been going there for 25 years. Now, I shouldn't say nobody. There's a few. But do you understand? Everybody that came up for prayer, I said, you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You got him praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. And it was like, let's get, you were there. It's like, let, you've videoed the thing. The thing. Um, it's like, let's get the basics. And then I, I, I wanted, to, I just thought, what do you teach every week? <laughs> is this just a family? Is this just, okay, it's a social club. Well, then let's di differentiate what God is doing from what man is doing. Oh, this is man's social agenda that's done under the name of church. Wonderful. This is what God is doing with raising warriors to have authority. If we want to have a picnic, great. If not, let's just come together for authority. And then you guys have your own friends and your own lives, and that's cool. You know what I'm saying? I guess some people, you know, they, no, it's fine because you need that family structure. But, um, but, you know, you're just like, God, do we stand a chance? How are we going to, you know, Hollywood, these territories have severe principalities ruling the people and the witches and the, and the demonized. How are we going to even deal with the demonized people? And it's not going to be one man's anointing. It's going to be the authority of each believer because eventually all of us together meet him in the clouds to where there is no longer found in heaven a place for the demonic any longer. Do you understand? Does that scripture sound familiar? Right now, the demonic is in different regions. The American film market, the one where everybody went to Pasadena, they did a good thing. They got an open heaven there. Do you know what the demonic wanted? A closed heaven and a controlled heaven in Santa Monica over the film market. So when the heaven opened there, the demonic, the demonic rushed in to Santa Monica where it wanted to be anyway. Because it didn't matter that it didn't have possession of the Rose Bowl for one day. What mattered was that it had possession of the eight weeks of the film market, which the decisions would affect the world for the next three years. It's just, it's, it, it isn't about one minister thinking he's better than the next or pride or somebody talking against another ministry. It is when you're void of the revelation of the spirit realm, then you will be caught up in a partial knowledge of truth and you won't understand how different things affect remember how i just said oh i'm oppressed here whoa i'm not oppressed you're oppressed there we were obviously there was a shift of where some of that demonic went does that make sense all right i believe if we begin to understand more how the demonic works well the problem was there was such a reinforcement 
and to, to control the film market. Do you realize that the year before we got dominion over the film market and we proved to technology that we can come in with, with an African pastor that has authority over water spirits from a, a, a local prophet that's been fighting and has authority with water spirits with a bunch of crazy prophets and 10 people, little homeless demonized guys from the Dream Center, we can sit one block away from the largest film market in the world and praise God like there's no tomorrow. We had witches manifest the whole thing. Song of the Lord hit the power. We broke the spirit over them. They hit their knee crying. We were set uh, for Charisma Magazine to come in on the film market to begin to understand that the body of Christ can take these kind of prophetic portable meetings around key decision times and change them. We had proof we were going to do it again. Do you realize, Be put yourself in the Queen of Heaven's position, okay? Put yourself in the demonic. He knows his time's short because as much as he tries to attack and shut down the revelations of the prophet, why do you hear so much gossip about the prophet or the prophets? Why? So that people won't listen to the revelation. If, they, if the devil can't stop the prophet, then he'll try and cut his head off. How do you cut the head of a prophet off today? Discredit him. Why do you think you catch gossip all the different places? Because there's revelations that if you get, you're going to become impenetrable and unstoppable as well. But you'll also be, the enemy will also start to do the same. Because if, if this gets widespread and people begin to have authority over the demonic, his time is done. And then that which was prophesied is fulfilled. There is no longer found in place in heaven, in the heavens, in the, in the clouds, a place for the demonic. Right now, those gods, they're seated in heavenly places. There are certain places where men have gained authority and the demonic cannot enter in. The fourth airplane, you know where it went down? Right in the backyard of a pastor that we were teaching spiritual warfare. He had, got, he had gotten all the pastors of his region together uh, six months, a year before that, and they got on the high place, and all the pastors began to come against the principalities. Corruption and city government and everything began to expose. Isn't that interesting? But then he took horrible retaliation. His wife heard one morning, just run away, just run. So she got up and left him, and she was whacked. Now, I had warned him not, she wanted to bring me in, and I told him, I said, you're not ready for that level yet because your people are not built up enough to understand how the warfare works, how the thoughts will hit to divide. Does that make sense? They're not meeting in the spirit. They're meeting in the human and in the soul. And the first time I bark or scream or freak, you know what I'm saying, or anybody does, they're going to they're gonna buckle. They're going to think, you offended, you hurt my feelings. Or, you know what I'm saying? Because they're in the soul. They're not yet in the spirit understanding there's a war and staying focused on the objective. But anyway, all the pastors left him ostracizing. But anyway, isn't it interesting? Where they had gained an authority in the spirit, that plane could not accomplish its mission. The territories it hit was where there wasn't yet our heavy witchcraft territories, where the demonic had authority in the spirit. Therefore, those men in the planes, in the clouds, does that make sense? In the air, the prince of the power of the air, they had dominion and obtained their objectives. All right. When a man of God, a woman of God, when there's an authority in a city, the demonic cannot manifest. Unless it's a greater authority than what's the authority in the city. Or unless the authority in the city gets taked out, taken down uh, from exhaustion, from who knows what. It could be a lot of different things. But, but in order for demonic to advance, the authority has to be removed somehow. So what we need to do is keep Moses' arms up. What we need to do, or as we become that, people need to keep your arms up. Does that make sense? Um, or we keep one another's arms up. Right now, you, you, you need to realize we're kind of like the rough and ready here. No, because we're rough and ready, a little rough around the edges, and we're ready to fight. Does that make sense? And God loves it, because that's exactly what God picked. Peter, a loudmouth, cursing fisherman. I have a feeling Peter probably likes shots of Jack Daniels. I don't know. Does that make sense? No, I'm just saying, I tend to think that those guys were a little bit rough and ready. Okay, through their process of relationship with the Lord, I believe that they became very broken, just like Moses did, and became very... Um, the more broken, the more love flows out. Does that make sense? But that's not something you can fake. So just be you. Walk with God. Love God. Do it as you can do it. And the process, you know, just it's the process. Sometimes it's painful. Just walk through it because it's what? You, growing pains. Sometimes it's just growing pains. Um, listen, I've gotten a lot more palatable. So is Bob. By the way, Charlie, Kim Clement went to, went to Bob because, you know, Prophets' ministries have a lot of warfare around them. Right, Jolene? 
Look at it. She, never, she's like, Wee! she's like that. There's smiles this big. <laughs> she can't hold it in. Anyway, prophets ministries have a lot of warfare around them. And one of the things Kim Clement told Bob is, Bob, you know, of all the people that I've ever had in my ministry, Charlie's the only one that's been able to, to hang with me through all the warfare. He said, maybe you should go back to, see, Charlie only heard from the time he was a baby Christian pray eight hours a day in the spirit. So Charlie didn't know any better. He didn't want to have coffee with the devil. He was praying eight hours a day in the spirit. And because of that, he's able to deal with the things. Kim said, Bob, you should maybe go back to keep Bob now says four hours a day because he triggers it was, you know, his brother was like, Bob, you're not building your church. You know, you're too hard on the people, you know, people like an easy, soft church. See, warfare churches don't build big numbers. But God says, I don't always look for big numbers. God looks for the few, the, the rough and the ready, the few and the faithful that God can anoint. So here's an interesting side note, because some of you people are very focused on careers, which is good. Here's an interesting side note. The authority that God says that you gain, the dominion that you gain with me will also assist you in your career. Because that which kept you out can no longer hinder you. So it might be an uphill fight. But as you establish that thing in the spirit, God says it'll be established. Excuse me. Do you know where I get something to eat right now? There's no church, anything that gives out blankets or anything? No. All right. Have a good night. Good night. Um, Praise you, Jesus. All right. Be better at it than for now. You're someone that you go, oh, God bless me and help us go well and all that kind of stuff. Um, but to actually take dominion and declare God's sovereignty over it and enter in, you know, then, yeah. And maybe you're not supposed to get, like, every audition or something like that, but... You've always, you know, you've always, in what you're doing, you've always got free will, and you have ulterior motives as well. A lot of people trying to get a little sum on the side. You know what I'm saying? There's always ulterior motives. There is the actual talent, or there is a name that they need, or oh. ulterior motives. So it's not, I think there's a lot of things going on, and you've got people's free will. Here's the thing that I do when I go into any kind of business situation <clears throat> is on the way to the job, I begin to pray, and I remember I was going into people's homes just to install satellites, and God started showing me, in every pe person's home, different spirits live. So I got news for you, when you go to that audition, all these people come from different homes and it's influenced under different spirits. Well, luckily, I didn't have to take on all 10. I could just deal in one home at a time. But I'd go into a home, and I would begin to pray, and God would show me, ooh, there's pornography over this home, oh, da 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 oh, these are the different spirits, and I would bind up the demons that influence the person that I'm going to do business with. So I would take authority of the spirits, the spirit of greed, the spirit of lust, the spirit of fear. He's afraid that if he goes with me, something else will happen. He's afraid that, I mean, you know, I'm trying to apply it. I would go into the spirit to deal with the spirits that were influencing the person. See, that which is not faith is sin. All your life, the devil controlled you by fear. When somebody is making a decision from fear, they're not stepping out in faith. Don't you know that, that the Hollywood industry, if you're talking about the films and stuff, it's governed by fear. The producers are afraid that they won't be accepted, so they stick to formulas. Does that make sense? They're afraid to step out and try something new. Um, getting your investor to drop your money, you know, you have to give them. There's just, okay. Um, so I would always go in and pray over the spirit realm that I was going to be dealing with and by taking authority of the spirits. I go into sushi bars a lot. I like sushi, but I also found it's a nice place. Certain bars where you, sushi, sushi bars where you, because you can't converse with people. But I go to certain ones and I meet all kinds of people in the industry and all kinds of players. Now, it's interesting because when I was younger, I would always pray before I went into any building or anything because I knew there were spirits. As you get older, you're like, you, you just don't as much. And sometimes I'll sit down and start to eat. And this horrible feeling of dread will come over me or panic attack or does that make sense or just kind of a funny feeling like oh, I just got to get out of here right and if I'm not paying attention 
because because all of us don't like to always be playing with the spirit. Sometimes you go, oh, I just want to. I know about the Matrix. I know this steak isn't real, but it tastes good. <laughs> okay, all right. So um, as soon as I remember, I'm like. I'm paying attention. Why am I having this reaction? Oh, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. What the heck is this all about? All of a sudden, I go, I'm buying the spirit in this place right now. I take authority over you. I command you. What is it? It's a, it's a spirit that's in that place. And in the spirit realm, you just look like a glob of light coming into its dominion. And so it just goes to push the light out. Because, see, the spirit realm knows that you guys, we're eventually going to rule and reign. And then that's when there's no longer found in heaven a place for the devil any longer. And that's where all people say, all of us sitting around say, this is the man that troubled the nation. Wow, once we got into one accord and quit, oh, we're not fighting each other. <laughs> we're all humans. Uh, once we got into one accord, it was nothing to take this stuff down. But the way the enemy worked was by, A, people don't believe he's real. So they attack other people. You're in fantasy. You're nuts. Da, 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 right? And they do that. What if one, one, I sent one of the emails out and one Christian woman wrote back. Um, what, what did she say? Something about, um, uh, we were talking about a prince, oh, a spirit of religion uh, over the churches, uh, killing the prophet, something or other. And she said, this sounds more like a delusional blah, blah, from not having your, 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 um, your medication balanced correctly. <laughs> All right. But it's that because they sit under their psych, psychology pastors as well. Does that make sense? You've got the, the Hank Hanagraphs. You've got, you got all this stuff where they're not entering people into the... Okay, great. The devil just uses that. Does that make sense? And so people don't get into one accord. They can't. They don't actually learn to discern the spirit. They're fighting each other. I, my favorite one is the... You're the devil! Christians are a husband and a wife. That, that, that's, like, that's, like a, that's a great one. You're the devil! <laughs> all right. Well, that never goes over. I, I get, when I serve my food on the craft service thing and it's really good, they're like, you're evil. You're a devil. You're saying that to me. That's terrible. You're terrible. Because I'm serving them really good food. It's not bad for them, but they perceive it as, well, chocolate chip cookies aren't bad. But it's funny. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm good. That's funny. So, yeah, but anyway, that one, that never goes over. You know, you're better off to pray if, if a spirit's manifesting through somebody. You're better off to pray um, and not feed into it because what always enters in is free will. So again, you have authority over the spirits. You don't have authority over somebody else's free will. And sometimes we pray against people's will. Get Hugh Hefner. Get him saved. Hugh Hefner. Why don't somebody bind the spirit that was using him? I mean, it's, it's already moved beyond you. It's already moved into a lot of other manifestations at this point. Anyway, okay. So I wanted to finish and then do some prayer here. I wanted to finish this. And part of what you're experiencing is the... Um, uh, Lauren just took a walk through Venice. And what kind of prayers were you praying? Were you specifically commanding things out? Were you coming against the spirits? What were you praying? Eric. 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 What did I say, Brian? I Lauren. <laughs> Lauren doesn't do. Too, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I, I didn't. You know, the, I, I knew that I wasn't going to try to, you know, come up against some principality or anything like that. I just thought that I would be going up and down the boardwalk inviting God's presence. Inviting okay, good. You know, inviting his kingdom. I wasn't about to, you know, I, get, I did I did do one thing. As I was getting out of the water and I was carrying my gear, I walked past that big Ashroth pole mm -hmm. and I got really cocky. I said, you're coming down. And just it's kind of a mockery thing, you know. <laughs> it's almost like in the spirit I hear the evil clown. You know, but, <laughs> but anyway, no, I mean, the prayer was just primarily... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lucy, I'm home. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Just primarily just inviting his presence because, you know, I knew. I knew. It's like I'm not right. against part, part of this, has God taken you through lessons of dealing with fear? Uh, yeah, I'm in the heat of the battle right now. All right. Okay. So, okay. so part, part of the real thing that, remember I told you, it's, it's line upon line. And if you look at your life, everybody's at a different place in their walk based on what God needs to work on. Right now, you're dealing with fear. 
okay? And you've got to get dominion over fear in you. Until you begin to get a revelation over fear, the demonic will mock you or will challenge you or will attack you. And the opening is fear. And the fear is the fear that's already in you. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. All right. So not a big thing. And, and I thank you for being transparent with us. You know what I'm saying? No, because oh, it's, sure. it, it makes it a learning lesson for all of us. Absolutely. All right. The good news is you're challenging your fear. Okay? But fear is one of the first dominions that we have to get within our own temple. And if fear has access to you, you are not equipped to go in... If fear has access to you, that's the, the darkness is already in you. And so the, the, it's, like it's already in you. You've got to get the fear out. The first thing you do is get the fear out of you. Don't even challenge anything outside of you. Drive the fear out. God's not giving me a spirit of fear, but love, strength, and a sound mind. But Rabbi Shakara, get out now! And if you have to get violent and no, mean... I've been doing that. I've been doing all that. Good. I'm just saying it, it's, been, it's been tooth and nail. I understand, but that's where, you're, that's where your spiritual muscle gets built. This is where your dominion comes up. Remember, we were saying about certain people losing mommy and daddy's kingdom. Pray some warfare. Why? Because they need to learn to fight. They need to learn how it works. They, you you want to have authority in the spirit realm, so you need some battles. But fear is the first thing. I used to wake up in the morning with anxiety that would just sit like this. That would just sit, anxiety, okay? And I'd wake up and, uh-huh, you know, wonder what's going to go wrong today, you know, and it's just anxiety. But I started to recognize that was a spirit sitting on me. I wake up and go, Ramasha, get off of me! Ramasha, harota! And then that, sometimes that thing would try to light on me again. Oh, get off of me. And the key is the key is to keep the spirits off you. And any kind of a... a good time to put on the breastplate of righteousness also. Yeah. And well, when, and when God had me... Righteousness is a covering over that right. fear and everything else that's inside. That is inside us. That is, that is part of who we are. But the enemy comes and sits on that and accuses you by it. And right. Except for I, I, which is which is good in and and in, in there, but I can only teach from the point of view that God's taken me from and part of the thing is fear is a spirit the Bible says yes. and it and it's not from God. So therefore, I don't want that spirit in me. So let me go ahead and just give the way God taught me on this. Um there's a saying, feed your faith and your fear will disappear. Yeah, I mean, we're getting into semantics of, of positioning of thoughts and stuff, but let me just show you how God showed me. Um, I'm not giving you a spirit of fear, all right? If you stop there, fear is a spirit, and it's not from God. What he's given us is love, strength, and a sound mind. Okay, um, all your life the devil controlled you by fear. But when you're being motivated to make a decision, I had a girl call me um, that does our voicemails. And at one point, because uh, my voicemail I had messed up and I knocked it off, and I called her up to have her redo the message because I like the voice. And she goes, uh, I'm getting a check in my spirit not, uh, that I shouldn't be doing that. Well, she didn't have, wasn't discerning. Uh, and I said, that's not a check. I, I'm, I'm discerning because I've had to learn to discern and I can pick up on things in other people because I've had to learn to discern that. I said, that's not a check. I said, that's fear. And I said, that's the devil. And she goes, well, I'm afraid that if I'm on your voicemail, it might make extra retaliation. I said, no, that's just the devil. You're not going to, your voicemail has nothing to do with anything. I said, that's just the demonic. But she didn't understand. I'm getting a check. Said, no. See, it's just the devil. And what's he trying to do? Shut down everything the prophet's doing by trying to put people in fear. She's not going to get any warfare. She's already putting major Christian TV programs on. Does that make sense? She's already the only Christian I know that's still in the gateway one block from the L.A. County Museum. Hello? And she's putting Christian ministries on TV. Hello? Does that make sense? And now she's got the academy. She's got every kind of thing in her building, every media thing you could imagine, you know? And who's praying for her? <laughs> I don't think her church is. <laughs> you know? I know, because I'm the one that got her going to it when I used to go there. All right. Anyway, um... And I have a lot of respect for people like that that are actually in the business field, that are actually taking the dominion. That's what I believe we're supposed to be doing is coming together so that people are actually taking position and dominion and learning how to rule at their posts in the media. All right. Um, um, get me back on track. Uh, fear. So um, God's not giving me a spirit of fear, but love, strength, and a sound mind. All right. 
So that's when I first started waking up, and I started recognizing different types of fear. Now, I knew that fear was a spirit, and I knew that it would try to control my choices. So I would try to discern different types of fear. Anxiety is fear. There's a certain kind of fear that you'll feel in your stomach about finances. Okay? You know what I'm talking about? You feel it right here. Now watch. When you get real, as you begin to blow this thing away from you, and just drive it away from you, you will feel the fear out here. You will feel it out here. As you get real sensitive, you can tell if your path begins to get clogged. I, as far out as I can sense, I never let that get in my path because I don't want to walk into that day where that manifests. Boom, shaka, rotaya. I love to fight. I'm so tired of fighting. I don't want to fight anymore. I hate fighting. My God, I didn't sign up for this. You're going to get your butt kicked. I thank you, God. You teach my hands to war, my fingers to fight. Joshua and Caleb, as much as I had a heart for war when I was a young man, now as an old man, I still have a heart for war. All right, when you have a heart for war, you're going to have a lot less warfare. When the devil thinks he can push you around, you're going to get kicked on a lot, just like a bully. You rule or he rules. No middle ground, no compromise. If you compromise, he's ruling. You rule or he rules. All right. So pay attention to that little anxiety. Okay. As I begin to meditate on the scripture, remember the Bible says to meditate on the scripture? I'm not giving you a spirit of fear. Hmm. All right. I then began to go, well, that's interesting because I can walk in a room and I can be afraid of that person and not afraid of that person. And I started to recognize that my emotions will respond or react to the spirit realm. Oh, isn't that interesting? My emotions are not who I am, but I began to see my emotions like radar. So if I walked into a room and felt afraid, I knew I'm not afraid. I can tell the difference from emotionally responding to fear versus fear, the spirit invading me. All right? How do you discern the difference? What you're going through. You're wrestling with it. You are, think about it. I'm giving you some, some understanding, but think about it. Is this thing in me? Am I reacting to it? Does that make sense? Um, I began to shakamaroha, ya rota. I began to get up when I would feel the anxiety. You know what anxiousness is? It's anxiety. You know uh, what's wrong today? What's wrong today? I don't know what's wrong. And I would just pray it. If it, look at if you're going through something, pray violently in the spirit. The atmosphere just tends to change. Stir up that gift. ya rota ya. Devil lo- loves to shut you down. God wants to stir you up. That's why he sends his Holy Spirit cattle prods. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I began to recognize that my emotions reacted to fear. Now, when I'm in any kind of a spiritual confrontation, remember we talked about building the walls? You're still getting your walls built up. When your wall is up, your wall becomes a shield so that a spirit can invade. Now it's looking for cracks or looking for doorways or access points to get in you. Fear and faith are opposites. How can I, some of my lessons, believing for rent. And then I had to look at the thoughts I was entertaining. Here I am believing for rent, but meanwhile, I'm thinking, well, I've got 45 bucks. 25 bucks would buy me two weeks in the storage, and I could live on 15 bucks if I got a loaf of bread, and and I could sleep in my car. Here I'm believing for rent, entertaining thoughts of failure. I'm double-minded. I didn't know how the money was. I didn't know where it was going to come from. My battle was to get the doubt and unbelief out of me. And that was the battle. And luckily, God made it real simple and basic for me. But I began to battle. How can I be standing in faith, making plans how I'm going to survive on the street? I'm not in one, praying all faith, doubting nothing, that which you have. But let mm-hmm. not a double-minded man think of receive anything. My warfare was I was already invaded. I was already invaded. So part of what had to happen is walls of truth and revelation because I had to go through the battles. Every time I came through a faith battle, it made my bricks in my wall around Jerusalem, around me. People say, you're not supposed to have walls. I watch 
pastor saying, oh, you need to just open your heart to everybody. Open your heart. And what they don't teach people is no. You'll know what spirit a man is of by the, the fruit. Discern what spirit. I've watched wives that have, you know, bone disease because they love their husband and, and the demon in him just curses them. And rather than being taught correctly, she should go, oh, that's not the spirit of God talking to me right now. Close the door. Let the shield of faith take those blunts because that's not coming from God. Don't open your heart up to that. You can love somebody without opening yourself up to it. But we're getting such baby teaching in churches. Does that make sense? Even in the world, you, you're not going to take that kind of abuse. But they were told, oh, you got to open up and love them. You can love people without taking abuse. Does that make everybody is subject? Does that make a lot of things? But I saw that. I saw a guy giving testimony and, and done it. I, had to, I didn't correct him publicly. I had to sit through the meeting listen to some of the stuff. But I pulled him aside and said, your wife, we need healing for my wife. I said, your wife is sick because you curse her. And she opens her heart to it because she was taught by the church to be loving you. So open and love him. No, when that spirit's manifest and that's a demon, you shut, that, you shut down and you put your shield up and don't let those words penetrate you. You don't let them get planted into the depth of your heart. What the heck? We got babies teaching babies. And then, okay, and don't get me going. I'll get mad. I, I made a decision to not let ignorance upset me anymore. Because it ends up, it ends up poisoning. No, it ends up poisoning what, what we're doing here. Huh? No, but it, it does. It, 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 that if there was a, an Achilles heel, that's just one of the things. It's so frustrating to me. And then just sit around and watch them, and then they're and they're paying exorbitant amounts of money and following this and buying books and buy. And it's like, God, stop it. Okay. Anyway, all right. There's a series of process. God gave you common sense. Use some of it. Just use some of it, okay? Um, and then try and get understanding how the spirit realm's working. Now, once I began to understand, I got the fear out of me, all right? And, and as the revelations in the, in the areas of finances and the different areas that I had to battle for, and I got a revelation, the fear wasn't able to penetrate. And, it would, and I could feel when it approached and not. Because I'm well armored, I could break it. Does that make sense? Bam! And I was well armored. Why? Because I could resonate 100% faith. So again, let me show you where we're getting with that. When the walls were down around Jerusalem, why were walls around a city? To keep invaders out. Invading what? Invading thoughts. For us, invading thoughts. Okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of pull them together just so you get it, okay? Um, walls were down to keep invaders out. When our walls are down, how, can, how, was, how was I entertaining Come on, have some coffee. Oh, let's see. We're going to go put our stuff in storage. How was I entertaining failure? Because I had no resistance to it. It ran right through my mind. See, in Nehemiah, it said that they were a reproach before God when the walls were down. When I read that, I thought, give me a break. They just got beat up in the human, in the soul. I'm saying, give me a break. What are you, an ogre? Have a heart. I'm trying to, you know, feed these homeless. How could God let that happen to the home? Well, maybe he's letting Nehemiah, or whatever his name, what was the king, Nebuchadnezzar, maybe he's letting Nebuchadnezzar come to the end of himself. I don't know. He hasn't motivated me. Therefore, I might do a nice soulish thing, but he didn't motivate me. Listen, you're always going to have the homeless with you. Anytime you want, you can feed them. Right now, this oil goes on my feet. Isn't that what Jesus said? You're always going to have them with you. Fine. It's fine. You know, don't be accusing me because I'm not out there because this oil is going on my feet right now. Sometimes you have to see what the Spirit of God is doing and what the priorities are. You're always going to have the homeless with you. You can always feed them anytime you feel motivated. All right. Um, now, um, isn't that funny? You never saw it in that light, did you? And I know there's another scripture that said this is good religion. You know, feed the, the, hurt, the hurting moms and the child, you know, the fatherless and da, da, da. And there's, there's a little bit of difference sometimes. And that doesn't, everybody has ministries to whoever and let's just leave it at that. All right. I have to go with what God gives me. All right. Um, so I thought, God, I'm thinking that same terms. Why aren't you out feeding every homeless person? Why aren't you out? These people are messed up. Why don't you have a heart? Why aren't you, why are they a reproach before you? They're already messed up. Why are they reproach? Why? Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Do you, you understand? When my walls are down, I cannot resonate 100% faith. Pray in all faith, doubting nothing, that which you believe will come to pass. Let not a double-minded man think he'll receive anything. Does that make sense? Um, until my walls could go up, I couldn't evict out that spirit 
and keep that spirit out. Does that make sense? Therefore, I had a harder time manifesting or seeing manifestation of provisions. Do you understand? All right. So your first battle is in your, is in your mind and your thought. Well, it's not just your mind and thoughts. Yes, you pull down every th thought, but God wants to build walls of revelation, bricks, and those are the battles that you go through. Now, we talked about this. Many times men will read all these books and listen to all these tapes by other people, right? And then they'll run off half-cocked and try and take on principalities 20 floors higher, and they haven't even taken the second floor in their own walk. So they haven't, they're not using proven by them, they're not using self-proven revelation. They are using somebody else's revelation, which since it didn't get proved in battle, it's like wearing paper armor. Meaning the, the, the revelation are not bricks, they're just flat pieces of paper and they can't stand much of an assault. And so they go in and hit something, the first thing that happens, the assault hits, tags the fear, they're freaked. Well, if you let God build the warrior, You'll, begin, you'll go through your battles and you'll wrestle until you get a kingdom, until you get a dominion. And that becomes a strong block. And then he'll go, God says, rejoice and make your weakness your strength. Then he'll build the other section. Then he'll build the other section. Pretty soon this shielding begins to get built around you. Does that make sense? When I'm in a battle, the first thing I'm looking is I'm paying attention to see if anything is penetrating inside of me. Do you understand? I'm looking for things to be penetrating in me. Or if my shield of faith, my revelation of truth is being broken or compromised. I have met demons that they will tag into your mind through people. They will tag into your mind and hit the very fears that are in you because they see them. And it causes your shield of faith. Think of your shield of faith is what you believe. And then they tag something that you believe. Or when you're caught up in that, it's your power. There's all these different things. And there's, so there's this whole shifting process through trial and error, through battles, to where you begin to get ready for higher level demons. Are we making any sense? Mm -hmm. yes. I want to continue on that line, so bring me right back there. But let me just finish this thing about fear. Once I understood that my emotions react to spiritual atmospheres and spiritual climates... I started, I started testing this thing. And I was on Patty's staff. And I remember we were doing meetings over at the Methodist Church. So we'd pray through the building. <clears throat> and, oh, man, the pastors would get upset. What are you praying through here? We pray here all the time. Well, we just need to be cleansing the place. Well, don't ever say that. We don't have demons at our church. Okay. I don't know. <clears throat> I remember having the conversation. I wasn't real politically savvy, as if I am now. <laughs> all right. But, um, you know, we, our assignment was to go pray through the church. And I would just go upstairs, up above. And I, I just, on that revelation, my emotions react to spirits. Um, because in the presence of a demon, you will feel fear and condemnation. In the presence of a demon, you will feel fear and condemnation. Why? These, this is a force that they exert to control you. Okay. And what's interesting is when you meet people and have conversations, you're not paying attention to the other forces that are hitting you. You need to. Because you begin to discern what spirit they're of. Or what spirit is using situations. But it's important to take dominion. All right. I would walk around and turn the lights off. And I'd walk around like this. And I would go, ooh, I don't want to go over there. I knew that's where the spirit was. Because I was afraid to go over there. My emotions, re I didn't care about going over here at all. It was dark. I did not want to go over there. And I just went into that corner. And I just started, ch I just chased stuff out like that. And I know God was getting a kick out of it. But I was letting my emotions, where I didn't want to go, direct where I went. What I was, where I was afraid to go, I knew was darkness. To this day, how do I find darkness? I just look where I don't want to go, and I go there. Why? Because he said, go into the darkness. He said, and be a light. Well, it's not that I'm supposed to go, you know, parrot verse in scripture. I need to just release the light that's in me. Does that make sense? The light is in me. I just need to go into the darkness. All right. And that, and so that's interesting. But I began to recognize that my... Now, it's different. When fear is in me, it's different than when my emotions react to fear. When you're casting a demon out of somebody, 
I will tell you if the fear, sometimes you wonder if the thing, you, sometimes the thoughts will hit you. This guy is bigger than you. He's going to punch you out. Did it? Okay, this is some of the games that the demons will play. And it's really interesting because you watch your thoughts. There's so much happening in your thought life when you pray for people. The thought life is where the spirits are talking to you. So watch what you're re- a- answering back. It's really funny. Or watch the thoughts that it's trying to get you to think. It's just really funny because you have to learn to win in that arena. And, not, and it'll engage you and pull you in. And no, 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 you, you can't. The second you find fear well up in you that this guy's going to punch you, you better take a step back. Because you've lost dominion in that situation. Mm-hmm. And the demon very likely will, use, will punch through that guy. Demon can't hit you. Does that make sense? When you're in that authority. When you're in that dominion. But once that fear. So in that challenge is your faith versus the fear that it's trying to get you. All right? Same thing. A woman's in a confrontation. She's going to get mugged or raped or something. That makes sense. First thing, start yelling out the name of Jesus. Why? God inhabits his praises. And, and that name is above all names. And I've seen that name cause the wicked to melt. Mm-hmm. Begin to just say, Jesus, Jesus. Not like, ah, oh, Jesus. I mean, you could probably do that too, but just Jesus. Begin to, okay? Now, it's interesting because you'll begin to break up these demons that are motivating the people to do what they're doing. All right? Again, if fear wells up in you, then you better run because you've already lost the spiritual battle. If fear, I'm not saying if you're reacting to fear, I'm saying if fear conquers your faith, if fear invades you to the point to where you're scared to death, if fear invades you, you've lost dominion. So part of the spiritual conquest is always between that faith and fear. And you'll begin to understand when there's a shielding around you, you'll be sensitive to it. You can tell when fear approaches you versus when fear enters into you. What about that one scripture that says, having done all, stand? In other words, in spite of the fear, you just you stand in the authority Ignoring the emotions, ignoring the... Well, if the guy's hitting you, you could always turn the other cheek. I'm sorry, I just made a really bad <laughs> joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, having Stan, that's more like, I've done everything. We prayed, we fasted, we asked God. I haven't seen the breakthrough. Having done all, stand, therefore stand. In other words, sometimes there is a persistent faith that breaks it. Remember the unjust judge? Give me bread, raise my kid. Go away, come back around. No, give it to me now. No, no. And Jesus said that persistent. Sometimes it needs a persistent faith pressure. When I'm on a, a mission, it doesn't matter what I can see. It matters if I'm being a pain in the butt. All right. Why do you think I'm such a pain in the butt in the natural sometimes to people? Because I spent so much time being a pain in the butt to the devil that I sometimes forget when I'm around people. <laughs> All right. Okay, but you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes you just get a very stubborn will or a stubborn faith having done all to stand, and you're just not budging. Okay, and that's part of what happens in the spirit. And like I said, again, if you spend a lot of time in the spirit, then you get around people, you got to, oh, boy, I, gotta, I guess I need to spend some time honing my people skills. <laughs> because, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's like, yeah, don't have time. Yeah, psh, wah. You know, results, results, results. Yeah. All right. Um, now, how long did it take you to take down Frankie that was about a six or a nine month battle. I can't remember. I was seeing I was seeing a pattern of about I think it was a it was like it, it was like three months of rest and it was either six or nine months of battle and or six months and three months of preparation. It was just weird, but it, that was a year and a half preparation. No, 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 no. That was a having done all stand exactly. And it wasn't just me, by the way. There were three prophets. I think Lori Mallard was one of them. I don't know the third person. Somebody else in the territory. All right. Uh, do, uh, later, later. A principality over a TV show. All right. Okay. I guess a quick question. Is there any change to Santa Monica and now recently, last couple of days at all? I'm just speaking as a person. When I came, I initially came to the first location. Uh, the first time since I moved to Los Angeles, I, I felt good in Santa Monica. It felt normal, friendly, or, you know, just... Uh, it's a lot better. It, uh, it does feel like it's special with those days. Yesterday? Yeah. 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 Uh, it's the first time since I moved here. I'm not you talking about yesterday. Yesterday, where do you... Country. We'll just know why I just couldn't hear yesterday. Or today, specifically today. Even Terry, we can't believe all the way to make any old payment. Nothing. So when was it weird... 
people were it was like you know just normal people were just having fun today you mean oh when i came here today yeah but i don't live here so but what was it like it's always like maddening absolutely maddening it's got you murder you feel like everything and everyone is against you you're praying like a mad woman as soon as you hit ocean boulevard it's like oh, I'm, not, <laughs> you know, I'm just like coming under it it's very today active. no all the time but today there was like no threats no problems all the way through topanga old topanga no problems i'm like wow what time was that from about a quarter to six to about you know in the morning or not evening? Mm -hmm. I felt like it was somebody's barbecue in the suburbia. It was just very <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, can I can I share something with you and, and don't and, and I don't feel this at all. In fact, you know, I'm sitting in New York going, is this doing any good? It's interesting because um, uh, Jolene's picking me up at the airport today and she said, You you can tell when you come into town because the spirit realm changes. Wow. Now, God, had, and, and I'm not doing it to pump me up at all, because trust me, I'm sitting in New York thinking, I'm the worst of the worst. I'm not equipped to do it. Am I making any difference? What's going on? Oh, my God. Okay. But it's funny, because I get you know, off the plane, and Jolene's, Jolene's like, you can tell when you enter into the region, because the whole territory changes. I remember the prophet that I was standing with in Malibu. And, and I would build her up and kept the stuff work as God had sent her into territory. She kind of stopped at a certain level of authority. And at one point, I, I, I don't want to go into why, and God was dealing with me about loving people even when they're unlovable, and boom, 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 and he was just teaching me some things. But at one point, because of some stuff, God just extended my authority up that direction. And I can remember when he extended it up that direction. I remember, uh, and I was thinking about that today, because I actually took a drive up Malibu, as soon as I got back, I just took a drive up the coast. And um, I can remember, and even in New York, God just had me walking and moving and just covering territory. It's what I did in Santa Monica. I just covered territory. Why? You just begin to just like, hi, <laughs> you just kind of cover the, get your presence out there. I always, it, to me, it reminded me of leaving Holy Ghost snail trails. Little white, little white light through the darkness. Everywhere we go, and the more little trails, you know, and I don't know how many days the trail would last before the darkness would collapse it, but if you're always walking, it's just, it kind of keeps the light up all around. You know, I drove up to Malibu on Tuesday just for a few hours, and for the first time, I was rejoicing going up, so I felt welcomed, and I felt like, boy, I could even live up here. Maybe I'm supposed to be up here. There was such a... Malibu? Yeah, there was such a good feeling going up there, and it, I was just like, wow. First time I've ever really sensed that, huh? It's just, it's just whatever's happening, right, you know. Sure, sure. And, and, and again, Tuesday, a lot of the spirit realm was out in Pasadena. Mm -hmm. Monday it was here. Tuesday it moved because the Dalai, Dalai Lama came in and it was heavy here Monday. Tuesday is when the meeting started and inland it became very oppressive. And I was aware Tuesday... I remember I told you, Don, I said, Woo, all the demons left town. Yeah, this is fun out here. Yeah, and I got a real breakthrough Friday morning when he left Pasadena. Right. So you've got the, you've got the, the spirits. I don't know. He's in Vancouver. Ottawa. Wait, Vancouver. 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 He's in Vancouver is in Ottawa tomorrow. All right. So, and, and I've got a friend that I'm going to be meeting with, by the way, who's got a place in Toronto. And I'll be talking to him the next couple of days. And I'm going to find out I might go up into Toronto, since that might be an opening. Not that I need warfare, but then again, I don't know. Um, so it's interesting, yeah. So you, you have different things. You've got people that gain dominion over spirits and, and living in a territory. Our presence... Does that make sense? Brings an authority for people that, that don't have authority. They become under our canopy or our shielding. That shielding is gained by authority that we conquer in the spirit. Um, and like I said, it's, it's encouraging when, when you've been in a territory. And obviously, if the ter all you're hearing in the territory is how useless you are and non-effective you are and blum, blum, you, uh, you pretty much can count on the fact that, that something's happening. And it's, not, it's, not, it's never you. It's, it's you having done all to stand because it's, God says it's my work in you. In other words, it's his spirit doing it. You're the one that's going to get lied to to get you. you you're, the whole, you're the Holy Spirit container, the, Ark of the portable Ark of the Covenant. I, I like the Gideon fire bottle, whatever. Um, but you're the presence of God 
And so this gets lied to so that the bottle will bring the presence out of the territory. So the hard thing, and you guys, you guys need to listen to this, the hard thing is for your mind to stay focused bringing the Holy Spirit where he wants you. Because the mind will say, I don't like this warfare, I don't like it. And unfortunately, the Holy Spirit gets pulled out of the territory because your mind gets lied to. Does that make sense? So the battle then is keeping your, so your thoughts don't, you don't get pushed away from where the Holy Spirit needs to be. The reason certain territories are very oppressive is because Christians' minds are not girded up enough to actually stand in that darkness and prosper in it. And if enough of them would move into the territory, we could, Venice, mass power in Venice, you know, there was, if, if uh, Church on the Way would have got a, clue, a revelation from half of the things that we were trying to do, and when Pat and I went in, and all, I mean, if they, they could have went in, they had more than enough people, could have mass power in Venice, seen major change by clearing up that spirit realm in Venice, you'd see that effect all over the place, and especially building the wall up and down along the borders here. <clears throat> so, anyway, it's interesting. Um, Obviously, and, and you don't think about it about yourself, but as you battled in a territory, in a region, you begin to have spirits. When God said, start building a wall in um, Manhattan, at one point, or you're going to, you know, you see worse destruction. At one point, you think, I mean, this whole time I was just thinking, you know, am I full of pride? I mean, I, I know I'm not full of pride, but you sure think about it. You know, you're like, boy, that sounds prideful. You know, who, do, who, do, who does this guy think he is? You know, it could have to do with the fact that I sent a lot of letters out to partners and I'm pretty sensitive. Who does this guy think he is? So I could have been getting some reaction to the letters, but that's what happens usually when I send out emails and stuff. Because um, it's hard. You know, we're not taught how prophets in the Bible work. And we're not taught how we, we, we all influence things and we all influence our territory. And God would that we would influence to a greater level. Does that make sense? And I think pride can always try and come up in the individual where we think we're just like really important. But it's also prideful to not walk in who God says you are because that's false humility. Um, and part of what got the freaky links and the whole freaky links battle, again, I, I would not take on that level of spirit. And God finally said, I need you to start agreeing with me that you are significant in this next move that I'm doing across the nation. And, and he'd already been dealing with me about the fact that when is God God? When his thoughts are my thoughts or when my thoughts are my thoughts? And when I'm Gideon, least of the least, worst of the worst, and how could God ever use me? Well, Jesus isn't my Lord. I don't care how much I go to church and pray to him. I'm not believing what he says I am. And he said, if you don't believe you're what I say you are, you won't be established. So I finally said, okay, I'm significant. And that's when the Freaky Links battle started. But then he's also continued to use me. When he sent me Manhattan, I said, God, Lord, that's a whole, that's a huge, Manhattan, that's huge. Uh, you can't look at it in the natural he said, no, you're already anointed. You've been dealing with these water spirits. You've been dealing with the Tibetan witchcraft. You've been dealing. It's the same Hollywood industry. It's the same spirits. The same, you're already anointed. So you have to look at it from the spirit realm, not the amount of people, not how big the buildings are, not what men think you are. You have to look at it from the standpoint of the spirit realm knows who you are. Paul, I know, and Jesus, I know. And that I don't have a problem with because I know I've dealt with high level spirits I, big deal God took me through that so I don't have a problem with that and all we're really talking about here is beginning to sh build a spiritual wall to shield from those spirits influencing the men does that make sense that doesn't necessarily mean that anybody will ever know your name or they might and it's probably better if they don't less warfare I mean because it's one thing for the spirit realm it's another thing to get the will of men purposely in the natural focusing on you. I had some religious people go, how come he doesn't give out his home address and his home phone number? And I thought, you wacko. <laughs> <laughs> because of people like you. <laughs> no, because did you, got, you realize that, that, that I, got, I got some wacko guy calling up. <laughs> He's calling up going, hi. <laughs> I want to talk to Don Paul. <laughs> and you feel like if it did, you'd go insane. Okay, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it's just a really intensity. Well, part of it is just holding a focus right back into it. And I don't know, know how to explain how God builds us in the spirit realm, but he teaches my hands to wear my fingers to fight. We begin to learn how to fight these things. So I remember in my prayer walks, I'm, I'm walking my dominion to and from because I walked to the grocery store every day when I was in my other place. And I remember all of a sudden, bam, I get hit in a joint with a pain. 
boom, I get hit in another joint. And I'm like, shock. And immediately I'm like, and I'm just in the spirit. And I'm looking for who is shooting this stuff at me. And I mean, the first thing is like, and I just start pulling because it's arrows. And I immediately, in the spirit, look right up. and Because your spirit man knows right where this stuff is. And I look right up at the thing, and the thing's shooting darts at me. So I started shooting them back. They didn't like that. But part of that came from a dominion of getting tired of praying those long, endless prayers and wanting prophetic targeting. Get me the thing in my sights. Show me the target. See? So all the lines are built line upon line, precept upon precept. Part of the thing is, you're not going to do it in the natural, but part of the thing is just begin to pray in the Spirit, pull that thing out. Does that make sense? And, and I like to turn right around and attack the thing that's attacking me. Who does, if you, you want to see some warfare, buddy? It's counting on taking pot shots that you're not going to shoot back because you won't know what hit you. And I'm just telling you, you know, it, it's easier if you go in and take out the snipers. Because that's what that thing is. And so you'll, just, you'll get hit with stuff. Um, and it's just about gaining a dominion there. And, not, and sometimes you have to walk in who you know you are. And see, many times in my warfare, as a demonic would try to come in to shut me down, I'd start sliding back into my human life and who I am. Remember, we're supposed to lay our life down, but I'd start sliding into what I want and where I, you know, for me and, you know, and I want to have, you know, white picket fence and a family and, and I want all my meat, right? You know, but sometimes you've got to lay down your life. And begin to walk in the spirit. And I can remember many times the enemy would try to shut me back down in the matrix. I know who I am and I know the authority that I walk in. And I would begin just to well up in that spirit place. But that's just a place you get to in the spirit realm. Now I tend to think that in Kung Fu and some of the martial arts, I tend to think that they are trying to pull forth that same thing. A greater authority in the spirit realm even to affect the natural realm. I wouldn't, you know, as I see some of those different things. So, um... But anyway, so that's part of it. You're going to deal with the, the attacks and the joints. You're going to deal with the different things that are shot and lodged at you. <laughs> Poor Sean is back there going, I don't know if I like this. I'm just kidding. I'm just teasing. Not really. But sometimes, you know, you can, you can sit there. I'm just kidding. You can sit there and you just start to, you know, you go, oh, I don't know. You're better off to learn how to fight than to learn how to survive or die. You're better off to learn to rule and reign. Start praying over your stuff. It doesn't matter if it challenges you. Look at the healing ministries. God told me I was going to have a healing ministry. The first five people I prayed for died on the spot. I mean, haven't you ever heard those stories? <laughs> That's all sent to challenge the Word of God and defeat Him. Then the guy overcomes and has an amazing healing ministry. Does that make sense? But he just gets determined to take that dimension and that dominion. Do you know what I mean? All right. Do you guys feel encouraged or uplifted? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. All right, I, I want to pray for you guys. Um, let me do this. Oh, New York was real interesting, by the way. Um, oh, boy. Uh, did, did Linda share what she saw after the Dalai Lama? No, you want to share that? Yeah. Well, a little corollary is with. <laughs> oh, let's see. Start at the beginning. Lauren called me. When you tell mm -hmm. me about the Dalai Lama and um, Right after that, so I start praying, you know, I saw... Here's the one email. Yeah, you gave me the, you sent me the email. Yeah, you got an email. You can see in the second part, then. So I, I saw, I want to visit Dalai Lama, shake his hands, and I saw, so I, I said, I better not, I better not speak English, you understand. I speak Chinese. And in the end, last, yesterday, <laughs> The uh, some of the other translations talk about that he who has believed it, who has believed that Christ is the Son of God, certifies that God is true. Why? Because they're coming in the power of God, and they by that power, that seal of God upon them, they are certified that God is true. Now, the other part of that is when I went back to bed at 3.45, he said, okay, now, chapters 3, 4, and 5 of John. And so for the next two hours, he gave us a tremendous download of, of all this different stuff. But that was the breakthrough. The Dalai Lama had left Pasadena. Mm -hmm. right. And that, I haven't had that type of vision for about six months. Mm -hmm. wow. so, the, uh, yeah. so there's a change in the atmosphere you know, and I fully witnessed to what uh, what both Lauren and Linda have experienced that the Dalai Lama got his butt kicked. He came here. We were able to go in a week ago Saturday. Uh, we had gone down to prayer walk around the city auditorium where the Dalai Lama was going to be. 
Well, the previous week we got at 7 a.m. Well, this week the Lord said go at 9 a.m. So in some case, I told everybody we went at 9 a.m. There were uh, two other people that showed up. So, okay, that's sufficient. So we're praying around. Well, it just so happens there's a children's conference, uh, concert, and it's up in the room where the Dalai Lama is going to be, be meeting privately with several of the people. But it's a free children's concert, so you were welcome to walk up and go up into that room. And because it was all a bunch of young kids and stuff, there was enough ruckus in the room that we were able to walk pretty freely around the room, <laughs> just annoying the room, and pray over the room during this, this concert. And then we went, as we were doing that, we prayed over all the doors to the balcony, we prayed over all the rails and all the staircases and all the entrances to the, to the auditorium. Well, then we walk around the outside, and the symphony orchestra is getting ready to have a rehearsal at 10 a.m. And all the musicians are going in the back door. So we just walk in with them in the back door. We walk across the back of the stage, anointing the band shell in the back of the stage. Then we turn around, and some of the musicians are out on, on the stage and setting up. So I just walk right across the front of the stage, and we're, you know, and we had anointed our feet as we went in there and stuff. We anointed that whole thing. And then we walked down into the audience area, and we walked up and down the rows of chairs, touching every chair and anointing every chair, and uh, had the Lord have us sit in a couple of places and bring the establishment of angels in those different places and stuff. And so we did all of that on Saturday before Easter, and, you know, two, three days before the Dalai Lama came into that area. Well, a gal who actually ministers out here in Venice came to Pasadena to minister during the time that Dalai Lama was there. You know, this trading of, of labor. Because I was pretty well out of commission this week while the Dalai Lama was actually here. And actually, that's what the Lord had told me. Is that what I was to do was to be before he got there. And so I did. But I was pretty much out of commission all week. Other than the Lord had me talk to this person who came up from Venice and just open their eyes to some revelation. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that, that they did with a couple of other people is they interviewed a lot of the people. They talked to a lot of the people who were attending this, mm -hmm. this Dalai Lama thing. Mm -hmm. And they asked this whole group of college students, well, what is the Dalai Lama teaching? Did you learn anything? Well, he's teaching uh, about uh, uh, what, what was, they were called, talking among themselves. The best they could come up with is that he talked about four laws, but they couldn't remember anything cool. of what it was that he said. Oh, okay. Thank you, Father. The best testimony ever. Yeah. Let, me, let, me, let me finish that up with, with a prayer that the force. We were after the whole event was over. Linda and I were saying prayers as we were getting ready to go to bed. And God actually showed me a vision of Dalai Lama's prayers that night. Yeah. And he was in mortal fear. Yeah. As he was praying, he was scared to death. Yeah. yeah. But with that, it was like, make no mistake, don't think that he's whipped. Yeah. But right now in the season, right at that moment, right, he was afraid. Yeah, in the sense that we had had the reason he came to Pasadena this time, because this is the only place in the United States that he came on this on this trip this whole spring. Is he was trying to figure out what happened this fall when they did this mandala that was supposed to invoke a world ruler. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just before he came to the United States, he spent two weeks in Dar es Salaam, India, doing this initiation of lamas in this particular ritual of invoking a world ruler. Right. Okay. Absorbing their energies, their spirit from them, in order to empower himself to come into Pasadena to troubleshoot what has happened here in the Los Angeles area that we did not accomplish what we set out to do last fall. And I believe that again. You've been watching Profit.TV. Please join us next time as we continue to bring you cutting edge spiritual technology. If you want to have your spiritual weapons sharpened, be sure to tune in to the next episode of Profit.TV. If you'd like more information, call 818. 994-4007 You've been listening to Profit.TV You can join us live right now on the World Wide Web at Profit.TV Again, www.profit.tv is where we sharpen your spiritual weapons using the latest in spiritual technology this is Seamus from Dublin, and you've been listening to Profit.TV. Please join us next time as we continue to bring you the latest in cutting-edge spiritual technology.